Hallelujah. Praise our awesome God. Let us move on to reading the word of God. The passage that we're going to see this morning. Turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible. Chapter 13 from verse 11 to verse 18. Let us all read and let the word of God enlighten us, reveal to us what Jesus Christ himself wanted the church to know. That is why he came to John and revealed this to him. Let us read the book of Revelation chapter 13 from verse 11 till verse 18. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who is understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Nebuchadnezzar lived from 630 BC to 561 BC was the second and the greatest king of the Chaldean dynasty. He reigned from 605 BC to 561 BC. He was known for his military might and the splendor of his capital Babylon. It can be found in the present day region of Hila of the Babel governorate in Iraq. Some years ago the German archaeologists excavated from 1902 to 1914 in Babylon and they found the Ishtar gate, one of the gates of this wonderful big city that he had built and they dismantled it from there and packed it up to take it with them to Berlin, Germany and there they meticulously reconstructed it in the Pergamon Museum. The gate is 50 feet high and the original foundations extended another 45 feet underground. The other panels that they found there in that region are around the world in different museums. This gate was the eighth gate in the inner city of Babylon and it was constructed in 575 BC on the north side of the city. Why I'm telling you this is one of the most important books which reveal to us the things that are yet to take place which Jesus himself refers to and we have been seeing in the past few weeks is a book written by the prophet Daniel and he tells about him being in this place in Babylon and having an interaction with King Nebuchadnezzar and what he writes is true. That is why I told you that this is not a fictitious made up tale. The Bible is real. The Bible is a historic book. The Bible is a book of prophecy. It will tell you what will happen. If there is only one book that you can ever read on this earth in, the, in your entire life, that should be the word of God, that it should be the Bible. You've not read it, I challenge you, I ask you to get one and read so that you'll know what will happen to you. So that you'll know the things that are happening or not. This king Nebuchadnezzar once was a form of an antichrist. He was the one who became 
and who thought that he was very special that he made a image of gold daniel chapter 3 was one it tells and it tells about the height and the width of it and he set it up in a plain in province of babylon and then when all the people had come to see you can see that a herald cried out saying to you it is commanded o peoples nations and languages that at the time you hear the sound of the horn and the music you shall fall down and worship the gold image that king nebuchadnezzar had set up they were not given an option to choose if they can bow down and worship it or not the next verse says in daniel chapter 3 verse 6 and who does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace this was a trial this was one of the little idol experiments that the devil had conducted hundreds of years ago and he will do the same devil does not have new ideas he operates in patterns and cycles the word of god says what was is what will be history repeats itself the people of the world know that yet many fail to learn from it that's a sad thing about it we've been seeing the cosmic terrestrial order of events in the past few weeks one of the first signs that jesus tells and the first thing that will take place is the beginning of the birth pangs of the sorrows the second is the end of the age the third is the rapture of christ's disciples the fourth that we've been seeing and are seeing this day is the antichrist the idol and the false prophet being inside the temple in jerusalem in israel in the holy of holies jesus himself says in matthew chapter 24 verse 15 that therefore when you see the abomination of desolation then let those who are in judea flee to the mountains and he tells about daniel the prophet the words that we had seen in daniel chapter 9 verse 27 saying the things that the antichrist would do he is the pseudo christ he acts like the one that is chosen to save the world he acts like he will be the savior and john 1 john 2 22 23 and 1 john 4 3 and 2 john 1 7 tells about what he would do he will deny that jesus is the christ and he will deny that jesus was born in flesh on earth and he denies that jesus is the son of god and he denies that god the father and his son jesus christ exist and everyone who agrees with him would belong to that same category last week we saw how right in the beginning of this important book god revealed to us that a supernatural war was started right in the garden of eden because of the disobedience of man and because of his compulsions because of his need to know evil he wanted to know what the forbidden knowledge was he wanted a taste of that which would not help him and that's how the supernatural war started and you and i are part of it everyone in this world whether they accept it or not whether they're aware of it or not excluding none everyone a part of the supernatural war you can take one of the two sides either you're the winning side the side of jesus christ or you will be on the losing side the side of the devil we can see from genesis chapter 3 verse 15 the seven things that god reveals to us that this is a war between the devil and man it's a war between devil's children and god's children it is a war between the gentile nations and the chosen nation of israel it is a war that took place between christ and the devil when jesus walked on earth and now it is a war between the church and the devil because the church is the lighthouse that has been set on the earth that jesus has placed here that jesus planted so that it will carry the light and it will shine and it will preach the good news of the gospel to all those who are there or not this is a war that has been going on for nearly 2000 years now and this is a war that will take place between the antichrist and all the people of the world no one can truly be on his side he will eventually show who he is and he will affect everybody at that time everyone will be impacted because of what will take place and what he will do the last thing that we can see is that it's a war between antichrist and christ that will take place a very short and a quick war 
it will just finish hardly in an hour or even less than that that will be the war that you need to watch and you need to see a war that will be fought without hands without sword you and i will be spectators at that time we will just watch that glorious even take place as one last time jesus christ crushes the head of the serpent and he will throw the antichrist and the false prophet into the lake that burns with fire forever and ever we've been seeing details about the antichrist that the bible has revealed to us we saw 15 details that the bible showed us in just a few passages if you look at the entire bible it'll take a few hours we are not able to do that at this time because actually i wanted to finish this in one sunday but now we prolonged it to three sundays and if we want to look at it in its entirety then i think we might have to look and spend another 6 to 7 or even 10 hours where we can exactly identify who are the groups of people there are billions of them who are expecting some of them are aware of it some of them are not aware of it and there are different groups that are totally dedicated and committed and they have texts that are written books that are written there are scriptures which point to this i'm not talking about the bible i'm talking about the other scriptures the other books that the other people of the world which belong to certain religions and also belong to certain cults which belong to certain groups they have an expectation they are also eagerly awaiting and all of their expectations will be merged in the antichrist and they will be deceived in the end and these are different groups that are there and each of them would require an hour or so to look at in detail so that you'll know what i'm saying is completely true based on their sayings based on their written books the 15 details that we saw last week is that antichrist will be cruel like no one has ever been cruel or not till then he'll be an excellent deceiver that hardly anyone will be able to make out that he's deceiving them he'll be very powerful and he will not have natural power but he'll have the devil's power and he will be given the devil's throne and devil's authority and he'll cause terrible destruction in all the earth and he will be successful in every project and program that he undertakes and he'll destroy powerful leaders in the world he'll destroy the nation of israel and kill many jews he will make deceit the norm in the world at that time and when all this happens and his success will make him very proud and he will destroy many people without warning because of that he will enjoy doing it because he's so proud and he wants to exercise his power and he will see how he can make death happen and it will lead to that final rise against even Jesus Christ himself he gets so proud he gets hardly challenged by anyone that he will think that he can even win against Jesus Christ Jesus did not just say that the antichrist will be there in the holy of holies in the temple in Jerusalem the bible reveals to that even the idol will be set up there and the prophet the false prophet will also be standing there and these three will be there deceiving the whole world and trying to take control of the whole world and rule all the people who live at that time abomination which jesus says to means tweba it means something that is disgusting something that is a bored something that is detestable there are many things that can be an abomination to many people you might find certain things disgusting the bible tells us about different groups of people and nations which find certain things disgusting but what god is saying here in matthew chapter 24 verse 15 is what is referring to to be an abomination to god himself when moses led the children of israel out of bondage and towards the promised land towards the end of his life he preaches wonderful sermons and gives them instructions what they should do and in the book of deuteronomy chapter 27 in one such set of instructions he says in verse 15 cursed is the one who makes a carved or molded image an abomination to the lord so that's what is an abomination to god and they say anyone who makes such an image will be cursed one who makes a carved or a molded image that becomes an abomination to god because it is a work of the hands of craftsmen 
and they set it up in secret he is telling even to those who profess to follow the lord who claim to have jesus christ as the lord god and savior but in the secret they have idols do you have idols in your home do you have idols in your mind do you have idols in your heart all that can keep you down and you might miss how pause all together that is what this verse is saying who set it up in secret the 10th commandment reveals to us how this is very vital very important and god looks at worshiping an idol as something that is totally detestable i wanted to look at 10 commandments quickly so that each and every one of you are reminded about it and it is good for you to check it each and every day to see if you've kept all of them and it is possible for every human being to keep it by the power of the holy spirit therefore let us go to exodus chapter 20 where it says that god spoke these words and gave it to the children of israel through moses and the first of the 10 commandments is that he says i am the lord your god you shall have no other gods before me there is no other god can man can create there is no other god which should be followed which are set up by the devil or anyone else that is why god reveals who he is and jesus christ came from heaven down to earth so that all the world will know that he was born in a miraculous supernatural way that is why he was born by a virgin and he lived and he did good and he preached and he said i am the way the truth and the life he clearly said that he is the chosen one that he is god or not that he is the messiah the bible is very clear some confused people have heard us said that he never said that i am god there are many instances in the gospel where he said i am he and that i am that he spoke refers to the i am that he said i am that i am when he met moses on that mountain the second commandment that god gives in exodus chapter 20 was for us you shall not make for yourself a carved image first he says that i am the lord your god and you shall have no other god and the very second commandment he gives them is that you shall not make for yourself a carved image man was made oh in the garden of eden and he was made in the image and likeness of god god is a spirit the natural world that you're living in where you can touch and feel is highly limited but the spirit world is almost unlimited and in that amazing things take place but people with darkened and narrow minds think that this is better than the spirit world and they're confused by it they're limited by the natural world because they can touch and feel it and they can experiment on it and they can verify but they are completely blind to the spirit world that is there but the world that you're living is a digital simulation of something that is much real which is the real thing science proves that one of the coming days i will tell you all about it maybe you list the reasons why the bible is true scientifically as days go we are able to find more and more evidence that the word of god is true and god has said here in exodus chapter 20 verse 4 you shall not make for yourself a carved image and he tells and lists it out and clearly shows it to them so that they would not be confused what a carved image is he says of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath you cannot make an idol which looks like anything that is there it cannot look like the creatures that are there on earth it cannot look like a monkey it cannot look like a dog it cannot look like a horse it cannot look like an elephant it cannot look like any of the other creatures because god does not look like that and he says you shall not make it of anything that is in the earth beneath or even in the water under the earth and then he continues and says you shall not bow down to them nor serve them for i am the lord your god i am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me so what he's telling is when anyone sets up an idol and bows down before it they have to given it an image and a likeness and 
man is limited in his creativity the devil is limited in the creativity that they end up making only something that looks similar to something that is already there on earth very rarely have they ever made something which is unique and they cannot do it because they are not creators we are not creators we are the created being god is the one who can create and he is the one who is able to make all these different species and when we make an idol we end up designing something that we have seen somewhere and it looks like something that is there on earth and he says when you do that you are hating god you are not honoring him you're not giving him reverence you're not giving him glory but this god who says when we worship an idol we will receive a curse in our life not just for ourselves but to four generations down the line if i worship an idol then my children and my children's children and my children's children will bear the effects of that and you got to understand that when god has made this commandment it's not a commandment that is just there for the nation of israel it is for all the people of the world but when we love him he shows mercy to thousand generations those of you who have accepted jesus christ as your lord god and savior you and your children and your children's children for a thousand generations the bible says will receive the mercy of god he will not look at you to judge you for the wrongs you have done he will be merciful he will help you he will cancel the things that are supposed to be placed on you he will stop a judgment that is supposed to come upon you he will stop a punishment that is supposed to come upon you he will show you mercy the third commandment the bible reveals is in verse 7 he says you shall not take the name of the lord your god in vain the fourth is you shall remember the sabbath day to keep it holy and the fifth is you shall honor your father and your mother the sixth is you shall not murder seventh is you shall not commit adultery eighth is you shall not steal ninth is you shall not bear false witness and the tenth is you shall not covet anything that is your neighbors you can read this entire chapter and god tells why and the reasons and what will happen to you if you do not keep it in the bible but this morning we don't have time to look at that we can see that god is very clear that he does not acknowledge he does not accept an idol to the point he says that if you have an idol as we saw in exodus chapter 20 verse 4 it means that you hate god that is why we cannot have an idol inside church we cannot make an idol of jesus christ or any of the apostles and go and worship it or put a garland or light a candle and fall down before it like as if they are god but man is confused there seems to be a tendency there seems to be a darkness in the minds of men that they like idols idols seems to hold a power over certain groups of people in this world if you see even entire nations worship idols but there are certain nations which follow other things so there is a tendency for a certain group of people to have idols in their life on february 2014 right here in the city of chennai it was claimed in perambur in a church of the roman catholic called the our lady of lords shrine that the idol of mary the mother of jesus christ was blinking and many people went there to see it but how can this be there in a church because we just read from the bible the holy book the only book that should be followed and kept in the bible in the church says that we cannot have an idol and god has made it clear you shall not make for yourself a carved image of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth you shall not bow down to them nor serve them how can it be there it shows that the confusion that is there in the minds of men and god says in book of roman chapter 1 verse 23 about the people who 
worship idols that they change the image of the incorruptible god into an image made in the likeness of corruptible men birds and four-footed animals and creeping things when you worship an idol and call it god you are changing the glory that god has the incorruptible god and making it like one of a corruptible man and a corruptible creation mary herself in the bible never claimed to be divine she never said that she came from heaven down to earth nor did she say that she was god there should be no confusion it is very sad that large groups of people in the world millions of them have this confusion and they think that mary the mother of jesus christ is god and they can pray to her and that she will be able to take them to heaven they claim they have miracles that happen to them but according to the bible mary is never mentioned to be a god mary can never be worshiped and definitely you cannot have an idol of mary i'm telling this with all humbleness not to hurt anybody but i want you to be saved from the wrath that is to come so that you will not get caught in the clutches of the antichrist what does the bible reveal to us the last recorded statement of mary is in john chapter 2 verse 5 this is the last statement that mary the mother of jesus christ makes in the entire bible after this she does not make a statement which is recorded here it means therefore she has not said anything that is important for those who follow jesus christ she has not said anything that is important for those who are of the church which means you and i need not look at mary as a god and what did she say in john chapter 2 verse 5 it says that mary said to the servants whatever he says to you do it that's the last statement whatever jesus christ has said to you do it are you doing what jesus has said and is recorded in the bible or are you doing what people have said or are you doing what you feel that you need to do are you just following the customs and the traditions of men you just go to a place where people have been going for generations you're going your parents when maybe your grandparents when and that's why you're also proceeding and going there it is not going to save you you've got to make the decision to save your life do not follow what others are doing blindly see what the bible says see what even mary the mother of jesus christ has said she is definitely highly favored by god i respect her she's one of the greatest vessels chosen by god in the bible to be even called as the mother of jesus christ but she is not god she was not born as a to a virgin mother she was born and she had a mother and a father she was born in natural fashion and manner the bible never says at any time that she performed any miracles even here in john chapter 2 verse 5 when there was a need for a miracle in cana at the wedding she didn't perform that miracle it was jesus who did it so therefore those who pray to an idol and they say that they get something the power that is working behind it is not the power of god because god is very clear he has said he will not entertain he will not accept an idol therefore he will never go against his word if he has gone against his word once then what word can we take it means that he'll go against his word god is not a man that he should lie what he has said he will keep forever and ever heaven and earth will pass away but the words of god will not pass away you got to know his word and keep it therefore the power and the miracles and the things that can happen if at all they truly happen are not from heaven it is from a dark occult background and that can put you in bondage that can make you get into a curse so be careful and be watchful the last recorded instance of mary in the bible is in acts chapter 1 verse 14 where it says that after jesus christ went up to heaven mary didn't go along with him because there are certain groups of people who say that even mary ascended into heaven it says after jesus was ascended acts chapter 1 verse 14 these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and mary the mother of jesus and with 
his brothers not that so that's what the bible says how can we call ourselves to be christians or followers of christ and call ourselves as the church of jesus christ if we do not accept what is there in the bible and when they all gathered there the 120 in the upper room they were all waiting for the baptism of the holy spirit and mary the mother of jesus christ also stayed there with them because she also needed the baptism of the holy spirit and when the day of pentecost came they were all in one accord in one place oh and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them all this is there in the bible and they were all they were all say all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance this would seem strange to those who call themselves as christians but have never read this or never seen this in a place called church but you've got to know that this is there in the bible and this how the church was started there was only one church there were not different kinds of church there were not different denominations there were not protestants or roman catholics there was one church started by jesus christ and jesus told and commanded his apostles and disciples and mary the mother of jesus christ was also with them at that time and she was also filled at that time and she was baptized in the holy spirit you got to see the earthly family that jesus had and it says in matthew chapter 13 verse 53 that he went to his own country that is to nazareth where he had grown up and he taught them in their synagogue and when he taught them there it says in matthew chapter 13 verse 54 they were astonished and said where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works is this not the carpenter's son is not his mother called mary and his brothers and list the name of all the brothers of jesus one is james second is joseph third is simon and fourth is judas and that's not the only siblings that he had was 56 it says and his sisters are they not all with us that's what the bible reveals to us because there are again a certain group of people who say that after jesus was born mary the mother of jesus christ did not have any other children i'm telling all this to you to save you so that you would not be deceived so that you would not be left behind get the bible and read it it is all there let your eyes be open to the truth because jesus is different jesus is separate he is the only way the only truth the only life mary cannot take you to heaven mary did not die for you nor did the apostles die for you they died as martyrs for the lord no other person can take you to heaven jesus himself refers to his mothers and brothers in matthew chapter 12 verse 48 and 49 he says who is my bro- mother and who are my brothers and he says who or does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother it means that he had all of them all this some of you would understand if you had heard teachings which are completely opposite to what i said and the others who not heard such words you are blessed so continue in the same but at this time i don't want those who are there and watching to be deceived by any lie that springs up on this earth in different groups of people you will become what you worship that is why you need to worship the true and living god god who is a spirit because the bible says in psalm 135 was 15 to 18 about idols that the idols of the nations are silver and gold the work of men's hands they have mouths but they do not speak eyes they have but they do not see they have ears but they do not hear nor is there any breath in their mouths and verse 18 it says those who make them are like them so is everyone who trusts in them when you worship an idol you take its likeness you will become 
like it you will not be able to progress and proceed you will have a mouth that you'll not be able to use to glorify god and you'll not be able to say that which is right you will have eyes but you'll not see the truth you'll be blinded by the power that operates in that idol you'll have ears but it would get blocked because you entertained a lie you will not be able to hear the truth when you follow an idol you will also have no breath in the end you will taste the second death you will take on that narrow mind and you'll take on all the things that that idol is and you would become like it therefore be cautious of what and who you worship jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1 onwards it tells about what we need to understand about idols this is a long passage and this itself would require a few hours to see in detail but i want to read this this morning so that you'll know what the word of god reveals to us what the bible reveals to us so join along and read here as i read it to you you can also read along jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1 it says hear the word which the lord speaks to you so this is the word the lord god is speaking to each and every one of you on earth and he is saying thus says the lord do not learn the way of the gentiles do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven for the gentiles are dismayed at them for the customs of the people are futile for one cuts a tree from the forest the work of hands of the workman with the axe they decorate it with silver and gold they fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple they are upright like a palm tree and they cannot speak they must be carried because they cannot go by themselves do not be afraid of them for they cannot do evil nor can they do any good in as much as there is none like you o lord you are great and your name is great in might who would not fear you o king of the nations for this is your rightful due for among all the wise men of the nations and in all the kingdoms there is none like you but they are all together dull hearted and foolish a wooden idol is a worthless doctrine silver is beaten into plates it is brought from tarshish and gold from upaz the work of the craftsmen and of the hands of the metal smith blue and purple are their clothing they are all the work of skillful men but the lord is a true god he is the living god and the everlasting king at his wrath the earth will tremble and the nations will not be able to endure his indignation thus you shall say to them the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens he has made the earth by his power he has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion when he utters his voice there is a multitude of waters in the heavens and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth he makes lightning for the rain he brings the wind out of his treasuries everyone is dull hearted without knowledge every metal smith is put to shame by an image for his molded image is falsehood and there is no breath in them they are futile a work of errors in the time of their punishment they shall perish the portion of jacob is not like them for he is the maker of all things and israel is the tribe of his inheritance the lord of hosts his his name all this is there in the word of god and the bible the bible reveals to us not only with the antichrist be there not only with the idol be set up there it will be the false prophet who will come and set it up he'll be like a false priest unto a god but he will not be the one serving the true and living god 
he'll be the one who will be deceiving the people with his words i have not seen everything that is there that the bible reveals to us about the idol but i want to proceed and see what the false prophet would do the bible reveals to us from the passage that we read at the beginning of the sunday mornings look into the word of god in revelation chapter 13 was 11 it says that john saw another beast coming up out of the earth the first beast came up out of the seas the second one comes out of the earth we shall see the details of that later as i said you need a lot of time to look into all of these in details but here in this passage we can see what the bible reveals to us that the false prophet has the same authority revelation 13 12 says he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence he is able to command he is able to utilize the kingdom of darkness and both of them work together to deceive the people of the world who live at that time and the false prophet secondly will force people to worship the antichrist this is where the entire world will be brought together because till this point the antichrist will be followed by a particular group of people who will call him the messiah they are maybe almost a billion right now on earth and they're there everywhere and they are almost like sleeper cells that are there and their texts and their leaders have prepared them and they've told them what they need to do when what they call as their messiah comes up and when they follow the antichrist the other nations as i said the world is divided into nations which some of them say they are atheists some of them follow islam some of them follow various religions which have idols if you see the asian nations they are the ones predominantly having lot of idols including the continent of africa and they will not be taken up too much by the antichrist they will not completely bow down to worship him that is why the devil uses a strategy to bring in the false prophet and when the false prophet comes what does he do he will force all the people revelation 13 12 says and he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast he will come and speak on behalf of the first beast he will command the others saying you need to worship look at him see how he has had a resurrection see how he is not human he'll tell lies that false prophet will tell lies and deceive the people and he will tell them he is god he is not of this earth he is supernatural he is divine you need to worship him as a god he will be the solution to all your problems he is the one who can give you a bright future it will speak many lies and cause and force everyone to follow it and even then these nations which have lot of idols and the people in these nations who worship idols will still not completely heal themselves and so he will do all these things with authority the third thing the false prophet would do just looking at this one particular passage in the book of revelation we can see that he performs great signs trying to convince all those who are not completely yielding their hearts and their minds and their spirit and their soul so he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men very few people can not be deceived when they see fire literal fire physical fire falling down when he says fire come down it will come down at that time because that will be the devil's finest tower right now he is limited right now he has not been given the power and the authority to exercise and use all that he has but at that time he will be given for 42 months that short period certain amount of power and to be able to perform certain kinds of signs and one of that sign will be bringing fire down from heaven you got to remember that when elijah the prophet in the old testament got together the priest of baal and ashereth and said he who answers by fire is god no fire fell on their sacrifice but fire fell only on elijah's sacrifice why because at that time it was not the time of the antichrist he could not 
exercise the power that he had but in this instance in this age of the antichrist he will be able to bring fire down from heaven and perform great signs that everyone will be deceived at that time the false prophet will deceive them 14 it says and he deceives those who dwell on earth by these signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast the fifth that is revealed to us in this passage is the false prophet makes the people make an idol so he is the one who now wants to get the whole world to follow and worship the antichrist and he is now able to see that they are not willing to worship this man but they have this tendency to fall down before an idol when they see an idol at once something happens to them they at once fall down before it and he knows that and that's why now he says in same verse 14 telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast and so he commands them to make an image and when the image is made now it all comes together sixth thing that is revealed here is the false prophet makes the idol even speak at this time see how the deception increases so this idol that they make for the first time it'll be an idol that will speak and he has been given the power to do that and not only will it speak it will kill those who don't worship it there are various things this idol could be made from and if there is time one day we will look at it how even those who get the mark will be the ones who would be able to be controlled by this idol it will be connected you would understand if you understand technology all that can be utilized at that time to make the people of the world worship and those who do not bow down they will immediately be killed the seventh thing that this passage says is that the false prophet forces people to get the mark revelation chapter 13 verse 16 it says he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and slave there is no one who can say i do not belong to a group that will accept it he will try to ensure that everyone everyone on earth what will be the position or their power or their stature the economic state rich and poor free and slave everyone will be forced to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads this shows that they want to identify with the antichrist because he is the one who have that mark his right hand would be withered because of the battle that he would be in and he will have the mark on the head and he will be blind in one eye and so to identify with him they will all receive the mark all these details we can see at a later time if possible how he gets it and what the bible reveals about that and when they do that it is like how in the ancient times cults and religions if you follow you have to do a tattoo and when you put a tattoo for that image or for that idol that you serve that is making you spill some blood as you put that tattoo and you identify yourself as you take that religious tattoo upon yourself that is why in the old testament for the children of israel god told them they should not carve or put a tattoo on their body like the other nations would do at that time because that tattoo makes a blood bond with the evil spirit that operates behind that idol and here they make all these people receive a mark and as they receive the mark they most probably would have to spill a little bit of blood even if it is just a needle which is injected a drop of blood is still a drop of your blood that is spilled at that time if you are there and you make a blood covenant with that antichrist and that image and the false prophet by spilling blood and that is why the bible tells us that worshiping the antichrist or receiving the mark of the antichrist is a deal breaker for god the devil knows that that is why he is forcing that to happen that is where everything will converge at that time everything will determine everything will be determined based on whether they worship the idol or not whether they worship the antichrist or not or whether they receive the mark or not the worship and mark are the deal breakers for god 
God will be merciful till the point anyone worships the idol. If they worship, then that is the end. His relationship will never be able to be formed between them. If they receive the mark, that will be the end. Till that point, whatever they have done, God will be merciful even at that time. Let us see what the Bible reveals to us about the worship of the beast and receiving the mark of the beast is the deal breaker. The first thing is that all are forced to worship and receive the mark because the devil knows that is a solid covenant relationship that the people are going to make when they do that. As we saw in Revelation 13, 12, he causes the earth and those who dwell to worship the first beast. And verse 16, he says, he causes all to receive the mark on their foreheads and on their right hand. The second deal breaker is that he deceives with signs to worship the beast. He is convincing everyone to somehow worship. There are many who would at that time still not worship the beast. They will still, there are people all over the world in various regions and places. Though there are many things that are taking place, they will still not worship the Antichrist. That is why he performs these signs. You can see here that the devil is doing his best. The Antichrist and the false prophet will do the best that they can to make everyone worship the Antichrist and the idol or to receive a mark because that separates the people. There will be no one who can be in between. If you do not receive it, then it means that you are on God's side. If you receive it, you are on the devil's side. And if you receive it, it means that you agreed with the devil and you have accepted his plan. That is why this deception takes place at that time. Jesus himself says in the passage, in the Mount Olives that we've been seeing in Matthew chapter 24 verse 4, he starts by saying, take heed that no one deceives you. He will not just deceive by saying that the Antichrist is going to be divine, that he is not man, that he is God. He will also try to convince them and pressurize them by the third thing that will be the deal breaker and that is nothing can be bought or sold so he'll bring everyone to that point he'll perform signs he will make the image talk and do all those supernatural things he'll bring fire down from heaven and even then there will be groups of people who still are not convinced so what happens he brings in this law revelation 13 17 says that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You can see here that he wants everyone to identify with him by either the mark or the name that is inscribed there or the number of his name that is going to be inscribed on their hands, put in their head and on their hand. You can see that a line is drawn. People have to take the sides. They will not be able to escape at that time. The fourth deal breaker is that Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 it says that when they do that when the third angel there's a list of things that happen there is a time that if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone and the fire of the torment ascends forever and ever and they have no rest day or night. Look at this horrible thing that will take place. If they receive the mark on their forehead or on their hand. Before that it says if anyone worships the beast and his image. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. And this is not going to end. It is not going to be just for. A few hundreds of years is not just going to be for a few thousands of years. It is going to go on for thousands and millions and billions of years forever and ever. That is why the Bible reveals to us so much about what is going to take place. In fact, there is so much written about this particular age than anything else in the Bible. If you see right from Genesis right down to Revelation, God is speaking to each and every one of you. He is telling you, he is cautioning you. He is saying these things will take place. And he's revealing all these things so that you would escape it. So that you do not get caught up in that tight situation. That's why Jesus is taking 
the church and his disciples away at that time so that they would not be put in that tight spot because if they are there they could get deceived if you are there they would be pressurized they would have to suffer hunger and thirst and maybe even die of starvation because they cannot buy or sell anything without receiving that mark and if they do it they immediately go to the other side and there is no salvation after that that's why it says if anyone receives it after that there is no turning back because they've almost entered into a blood covenant with the devil and they will forever be put in that flame with torment with smoke with no rest but our god is merciful even at that time in the same passage in revelation chapter 14 we see the previous two verses it says about how he sees the first angel in the midst of heaven at this time see the mercy of god even though the church is taken up the un- anointed apostles and bible teachers and evangelists and pastors and all those who truly have the anointing of god are taken up and there wouldn't be any anointed person at that time except the two witnesses who will be able to preach the gospel god now has to therefore send an angel from heaven and this angel will fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel revelation 14:6 says to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation tribe tongue and people even at this time see god is not letting go of his creation he's not letting go of man who's made in his image god has got a heart for them he's still merciful he still wants to save them and therefore the gospel will be preached even in this time but by this angel and he will be saying with a loud voice at that time and cautioning the people do not be afraid of the antichrist do not be afraid of the idol do not be afraid of the false prophet what is this angel saying it's saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come very soon jesus will come just 42 months and the judgment will take place and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water and do not worship the antichrist or the false prophet or the image this deal breaker the people who take the mark in their hands and in their forehead will come to the second phase of this 42 months we shall see that in the next week and when they come to that second phase of what happens during that time when the church is taken up the first few days they will be fine they think that they will be able to sell and buy and now they think ah now i can do whatever i can live my life but then those who received it will get painful sores all over their body horrible sores that will shoot up all those who receive the mask mark on their forehead it will become a blister that is the punishment that will get revelation 16 was one and two it says about one of the seven angels who come and pours out the bowls of the wrath of god on those on the earth and it will be that that when the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth a foul and loathsome so came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image so they'll be in torment in the last few months of their life it will be a terrible situation they will not be able to cure it it is something that will backfire on them they will try to modify genetics are involved microbiology are involved technology are involved in all of this we shall look at all the various angles in the future how all these thing will turn at one time because they now try to do certain things to the human body at this time how the devil thinks that he can now create his own race and that is why he's trying out all of this by this mark so that he can say these are not made in the image of god they belong to me but they will be the ones who will receive this foul and loathsome source the sixth thing is a deal breaker that you need to know is that there are those even at that time who will have victory over the antichrist revelation chapter 15 verse 2 it says i saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire this is in heaven 
and those who have the victory over the beast over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name standing on the sea of glass having harps of god so they are standing there in heaven and they've had victory over the beast over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name how did they have a victory the deal breaker is that they got beheaded they refused to take the mark and they chose death at that time revelation chapter 20 verse 4 tells about it and then i saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to jesus at that time they will shout and say jesus christ is god you are not god we will not bow down and worship you and when they do that they will get beheaded and it says they had been beheaded for their witness to jesus and for the word of god who had not worshiped the beast or his image and not had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands and they lived and reigned with christ for a thousand years i hope that none of you have to be left behind but unfortunately the parables that jesus says some of them 50% of them were considered foolish and they did not make it i list the parables at one time and tell you what the percentage has been shown by god to be and god wants each and every one of you to escape that time but many people do not take these things seriously they still have idols that they worship in secret and they are not idols which are material but they have secret things that they do which will hold them back they will not be able to be true and pure and clean unto god and that's why they get left behind you got to understand the seriousness at this time you got to be prepared at all times so that there is nothing in your life that is sin that is wrong that will keep you down and here these people they knew the truth that's how they were left behind but after that they came to that realization and they were able to stand up at that time and they they would then be able to see the bible they would then be able to remember all that was said to them and they chose to die instead of taking that mark we've been seeing how the mark is the deal breaker how worshiping the idol is the deal breaker between god and the devil that separates all these things that i've been telling you might seem strange to a lot of people who've never read the bible who've never seen a miracle in your life we've never seen a sign or a wonder we live in a time where man has been stripped and indoctrinated with the various courses and subjects and lessons saying that only the physical is real there is nothing else beyond that there is no spiritual or spirit world or the supernatural there is no god and they indoctrinated from the very young age and that is why they would not be able to receive the truth of the word of god that they find it difficult to believe that there is life after death they find it difficult to believe that there is a heaven and that jesus came from heaven down to earth and that these perform these miracles and signs and wonders without any explainable way in which it could have been done instantaneously last week i shared with you about bruce van natter who received a miracle in his life which was proved and which was shown to be real because of the before and after scans and the x-rays and all the things that were documented during that time this morning i want to share with you about dr mary c neil she is an orthopedic surgeon and she had one such supernatural incident in her life she graduated from the university of kentucky why i'm telling and sharing with you about her is that she is an orthopedic surgeon and you might think that bruce van natter was someone who was just a mechanic maybe he was delusional but now you're going to see how this lady is a well educated person she completed orthopedic surgery training at the university of southern california she lived in sweden and switzerland and los angeles while undergoing a specialty training in spinal surgery 
and she became the director of spine surgery at the University of Southern California and a founding partner of the Orthopedic Association of Jackson Hole. One morning in January 1999, she set out with excitement and anticipation to go kayaking with her husband Bill. It was his birthday and it was going to be the final day before they returned back to United States. They had planned to celebrate that day by paddling in a remote part of Chile on an infrequently run portion of the Upper Fai River known for its many waterfalls. They were experienced whitewater kayakers and they knew that there were 10 to 15 foot waterfalls in that region which would be challenging and that requires focus and a complete commitment because the river is most of the course closed on both banks by steep hillsides which are impossible covered by thick bamboo forests so once you start down the river there is no turning back she was confidently paddling her kayak into that swiftly moving river her head were two waterfalls as she approached the safest waterfalls she could see someone else's kayak was lodged sideways blocking the entrance and therefore she had no option but to go through that large dangerous waterfall and as she went towards that she was thrust over the waterfall with a tremendous turbulence and when she reached down she was flipped upside down and she plunged deep into the water surface and the turbulence that was there and the water that was there kept her there in that position and she was not able to make herself right she came to a sudden and sickening stop as she fell into the water as the front end of a boat got jammed in the underwater features that were there she was stuck under six to eight feet of water and she tried to get out of this rock and free the kayak but it was lodged in there so now she thought that she could free herself from this boat but the weight of the water pressing the waterfall that was falling on her pinned her down to that kayak and the force of the current was also pulling her on the other side that her entire torso was completely flayed and it was stretched out on the front of the kayak she couldn't even pick up her arms from the front duck deck and there was no air for her to breathe and the time was running out and she realized that she would very soon drown and she started slipping away she was able to notice at this time that instead of experiencing terror she felt peaceful she experienced no air hunger panic or fear and then she calmly started to pray and telling Jesus your will be done she says at that moment I relinquished my future to God's will I felt the physical sensation of being held and comforted by Jesus I didn't mean this in an abstract greeting card kind of a way I felt his embrace as tangibly as I could feel the plastic of the boat around my legs and the weight of the water pressing on my torso Jesus assured me that everything was fine that my husband would be fine and my young children would be fine regardless of whether I lived or died it felt as though Jesus was pouring his boundless love kindness compassion and mercy into my very soul time seemed to stop she felt a spirit expanding at that time and the dying process seemed to be taking very long because she was having flashbacks of all the things that happened in the life she could feel the powerful currents pulling a body out of the boat at this time and finally it ripped the helmet from her head and the life jacket from her body and after that her knees were forced to break in front as it the rest of the calves and the feet were stuck inside and she could hear the bones breaking as the body was broken at the knees 
tearing the ligaments yet she felt no pain at that time as the body was leaving the boat her spirit was slowly separating from her body suddenly she felt a spirit released with a single small pop she felt conscious and she says more conscious she had a heightened sense of clarity and intensity of consciousness she felt more alive than she had ever felt in her entire life she gracefully rose up out of the river feeling freedom and lightness she could look down on the entire scene from top down at the river and the forest that was there as she hovered above the river she was welcomed by a group of heavenly beings who had been sent they were radiant brilliant and overflowing with god's love she says i knew without a doubt that they had been sent by god to comfort guide and protect me in their presence i felt completely and unconditionally loved by god i was filled with an inexpressible peace and joy that made life on earth seem pale and appealing by comparison i felt like i had finally returned home by now she had been under water for almost 30 minutes and as she could see downstream she watched a family friend and the sons of that man who had also joined them at that time to go kayaking that boy had finally jumped in and he was able to grab the wrist of a body and pull the lifeless body out of the water and she could see her friends below frantically focused trying to revive her but she felt calm as she can see them there panicking and getting around the body and trying to revive it she did not want to return to her body she was getting a first taste of god's love swept up in that love she silently said goodbye to them and turned away from the river bank in the direction of heaven these are all the things that she says she's been going around the world and testifying you can even get a book but far below on the river bank they were performing cpr and they were talking to her and shouting at her and pleading with her far up from the sky as the spirit was proceeding towards heaven she could still hear chad pleading with her body to come back and take a breath at this moment she was overcome by compassion so she traveled back down to the path of her body she lay down in her body and took a single breath before getting up to travel up to the path towards heaven but even as she was going up she again heard chad pleading saying come on i know you are still here breathe just one more breath and this kept on happening she felt again compelled to return to her body and take one more breath and as this repeated again and again and slowly as she made a way up higher and higher again and again she decided to come back and take just one more breath seeing that they're all struggling and trying to bring her back to life and she could see that she was being delayed by this almost to the point that she now got annoyed with chad constantly calling her and saying come back just take one more breath because down on earth they could see this body limp and lifeless suddenly takes a breath and they at once are very happy but that happiness lasts just for a second because again it goes back to that limp state when she leaves the body and goes up towards heaven so they again try to revive her and call her and shout her and say come back and then she comes back so this went on for a long time and then finally she resumed her journey to heaven and she could see that there was a great brilliant hall larger and beautiful than anything even possible on earth and even as she was heading towards that she felt the pure complete unconditional absolute love of god and at this moment as she neared it she knew crossing and entering the hall would be the point of no return so she was given the choice to choose whether she would want to enter into eternity forever or whether go back down she says she felt ready to enter eternity with intense longing to be with god you got to understand that she says 
that she had a wonderful life on earth a wonderful husband wonderful family and she had everything that she had expected and there was nothing wrong that she wanted to leave behind but when she went and separated from a body in the spirit the joy the peace was so attractive that she did not want to come back but even as she was trying to enter into eternity and made the decision saying no i don't want to go back to earth i will be with you god she could feel that there was an obstacle the beckoning and the begging of her friends around her body to come back and take a breath that made even god change his mind so at the entrance of the hall the heavenly beings that were sent down to earth to take her up and show her path to heaven and to comfort her and encourage her came to speak to her at this time and they came and told her that it was not her time to enter heaven and that she had more work to do on earth and must return to her body she protested to them saying no i don't want to go back but they had to speak with her and give us several reasons as to why she should return back to earth then they all very sorrowfully returned together down back to the river bank she was sorrowful because she has to come now back to earth and enter her body and they were also sorrowful that they missing out on her and as they came to the river bank she says she sat in a body and lay down and was re- reunited with it she says many would describe my accident as terrible and tragic but i describe it as one of the greatest gifts i've ever received through this experience and conversation i gained an understanding of many of life's important questions such as what happens when we die why are we here why do bad things happen to good people these are the questions that every human being would have asked or should ask and this incident that took place took place so that each and every one of you are hearing would know that there is a heaven that there is an eternity that there is a god that you have a spirit that you are the spirit and you have a body and you have a mind that god has given you and you got to know the truth because it is the truth that will help you in the end and she says one of the several reasons for my return to earth was to tell my story to others and help them find their way back to god and i'm sharing this with you so that you would know that she is still there alive on earth they miraculously could take her you can get a book uh, and read it it'll tell you about how after she came back to her body she was almost paralyzed and the bones were broken she was almost immobile and so they had to tie her body to one of the kayaks and they had to carry it through that bamboo forest there was no path there was no road there was not even a mud track it was deep inside the jungle there and at that time if you see she writes a chapter about what happens she says angels were there by the river because they did not know how to find their way back but at that time suddenly she says several young chilean men materialized out of nowhere and couple of them helped lift and began to carry the boat to which i was secured and the others began to push a path through the bamboo no words were ever spoken to them or by them they just knew what to do it was a slow going through the forest then as i faded in and out of consciousness they were able to take it down till they came to a single track dirt path and from that they went on and found another dirt road and as they kept on going finally and eventually they came to a road the nearest village was too far away and they were wondering what they going to do even if they come to this road they hoped that there will be someone with an old tractor or some other kind of vehicle or an even a farm implement where she where they can put her and maybe a wheelbarrow and push her but to their surprise as they came to that road there was an ambulance waiting there all this is there this really happened maybe you can even email her or call her and go meet her and ask her because all these things took place you can check all the medical records of how 
she was almost 6 months completely unable to do anything normal in 1999 there were hardly any ambulance in that part of chili but to their great surprise they found an ambulance waiting there parked on the side of the road and the driver of the ambulance didn't speak but he seemed to be waiting for us you can read all the other things later some of the family members and friends went back to that same region went around in all the village to thank those men who had come and helped so they went around asking saying these kind of men are the ones who came and helped and they said there's no one like this who ever lived here that's when they came to that conclusion that they would have definitely been angels who had sent to help them god sends angels even now you need to surrender your life you need to connect with god you need to look to him know that heaven is real know that god is real know that there is one life one death one judgment prepare so that you would not enter into hell jesus talks about hell in the bible he reveals to us what hell is so that you would not go there it is not a fictional place it is not a mythical place it is not just something that is not real something that is just told to make some people not do wrong it is a real place we will see how in hell you are completely conscious you feel pain and you have memory of the things on earth god doesn't want you to go there it is not a place prepared for any of the human beings god wants you to make it into heaven that is why he reveals to us in his bible that jesus is a name that has been given to men that men could be saved in the coming weeks we shall see the great tribulation which is the sixth in the order of events that jesus describes in this wonderful all of a discourse and then the judgment on the wicked and finally seventh is the second coming of christ prepare yourselves connect with your god even at this time make the decision to follow jesus faithfully let us all prepare to open our bibles to psalm 91 let us confess our commitment let us say of the lord jesus christ that he is our refuge that he is our fortress that he is our god and in him we will trust in these difficult times you need god to help you so that you would be able to fulfill god's plan in your life so that you can be safe so that you would get the things that you need in your life so even at your homes or wherever you are seeing if you want you can give honor and respect to god by opening psalm 91 and let us all start and confess together in verse 2 let us say of the lord jesus christ that he is our refuge that he is our fortress he is our god in him we will trust let us all join together and say I will say of the Lord Jesus he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust hallelujah let us all read from verse 1 psalm 91 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress My God in him I will trust surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his tr- truth shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noon day a thousand may fall at your side and 10000 at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you made the lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you 
in all your ways. Oh, let the breath of God, the very breath that He breathed into man when He formed him out of dust in the Garden of Eden, breathe and give you the life of God, the peace of God, the joy of God. Oh, breathe into each and everyone's life. Oh, Jesus, breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, sweet spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name most high i'm yielding to your spirit i'm walking in your love oh jesus i Adore, oh Jesus, I adore, Jesus, I adore your holy name. Oh, every one of you can close your eyes and focus on Jesus Christ. And in receiving his presence and receiving his love and receiving the joy and the peace that he alone can give breathe upon me breath of God breathe upon me sweet spirit of the Lord as I live my hands in surrender to your name most high I'm yielding to your spirit I'm walking in your love oh Jesus I adore Oh Jesus I adore Jesus I adore Your holy name oh, Breathe upon me Breath of God, breathe upon me, sweet spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name, the most high. and strengthen each and everyone thank you for the life thank you for refreshing and renewing oh lord once again this morning for each and every one who've been touched thank you god for your mercy thank you god oh for your faithfulness hallelujah hallelujah 
that you need in your life. Oh, all honor, glory, and power, and praise belongs to the Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, creator of all, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great day, great week. See you all very soon.